If you've been on the internet in the last, you know, decade, the idea of a cheese board is not exactly new, but it does always seem fancy and sort of extra or extravagant or these big, huge things with salami roses and these wonderful spreads. But for us, this is our cheat when we find out someone's coming over really quickly and we don't have anything in our fridge, or we just don't feel like making dinner and we want to sit down and make a movie. We have perfected the art of the 10 minute cheese board, the cheater's cheese board, the <laughs> super simple, this is a formula, put it together without having to think about it cheese board that makes you look like a boss and it's also just happy. So come with us, we're going to prove this does not need to be fancy, this does not need to be fussy, and in 10 minutes you can have something lovely for yourself or for anyone in your life. Let's do it together. So what we're going to talk about is how to do this cheese board in 10 minutes or less. And really what you want is just having the ingredients on hand so that you can quickly do it. So as we were prepping for this, we decided to stay true and to be honest for everybody. We're not going to cheat. We're not going to cheat and go to the store and get stuff. We're really literally doing a cheese board and filling it with things that we have in our pantry. We did not go shopping for so, any of this. We live together. This is our real fridge. This is our kitchen. We're just gonna pull stuff out and put it together. And what we have is what we have. But it goes to show, if you watch our pantry video, when you have some things that you know where they are and you know what you like to have on hand, this becomes really easy. And we're just gonna start building. So first we need a board. Yeah, so we're gonna go to our board, <laughs> our cutting board wall, which I get that not everyone has an obsession with cutting boards like we do, but when we moved in together, we collected all of our cutting boards. So we have quite a few to choose from, but if you don't, um, we have other options. So we got a board, but you know what? You don't have to have a board. You don't have to be as obsessed as we are. <laughs> that collection came because when we merged our houses together, we had a lot of cutting boards and we thought, let's make a display out of it. But you know what? We use that a lot. People go, oh, wow, you're not using it, but we're entertaining so all the time. Yeah. So we do use it a lot. So this is the board I chose, but don't worry. If you don't have a board, I prepared something. I did cheat here, I prepared. Because Just to show you I that you can use whatever. Yeah, to show you that even if you don't have a board, I took a cookie sheet and just took a paper bag from Trader Joe's, Trader Joe, or you know any grocery store that's now doing paper bags, or Amazon sends them. Just turn it inside out, and now look at that. You can put that out and have a great board. So you so, don't have to do it. No excuses. You have a cookie sheet, and if you don't have a cookie sheet and you don't want to do that, you can just buy a roll of kids' craft paper and put it out. It Parchment looks great. Paper. Parchment paper, anything like that. Just. You just need something for the foundation. So now the foundation's out and we're gonna start getting cheeses. So while you, you wanna get cheeses while I you talk about it? You get cheeses on that crackers. Okay. <laughs> so the main thing you wanna do when you're pulling out your cheese is you wanna look for too soft and too hard. I'm gonna make some choices here because we do have some cheeses that are hard and we have cheeses that are soft. Oh, we're kind of low on hard cheeses. Okay, here we go. Um, so I have a Manchego and I have a Gouda that we had wrapped because you know what the cool thing is, is that when you're doing this, even if you have cheese that you set out because you're doing it as a dinner for yourself, you don't have to use it all. So like this was from the other night, we had a board. So a Gouda is always a good choice. This is a Manchego, but the principle that you want to do is two hard cheeses and then two soft. So there's goat I have, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set out a blue because I know that I have a friend who likes blue and we're gonna serve this cheese board her and she likes it. So that's what we're gonna do. And then I think I'm just gonna go with the standard double cream brie because these are cheap. And what you wanna do is look for something that's more economical on one end and then spend some money on something that you really want, that second soft cheese or the second hard cheese that's just a little bit more special or something that makes you happy. Fun, that feels you know, special for the time that you can have some fun with. I like the idea of having things that you know you always have on hand or you can always count on, and then having some variety that you just love. Um, my favorite is 
a double cream that we get from Trader Joe's called Saint Andre. It's delicious. Highly recommend if you are lucky enough to live near Trader Joe's. But sometimes you don't have that, so you you know you just have whatever you want. I'm gonna only cut a portion of this because yeah. I got this at Costco, mm -hmm. and it's a humongous piece, <laughs> and I don't want that much. So we know we can wrap this cheese. So there you go. So your options are always: do I put out a chunk of cheese or do I actually slice? And how I tend to think about it is. For a cheese like this, it's the brie. I want to kind of help people along. So I'll put a little knife and kind of crumble a few pieces so they know they can get going. If you have something like a, like a brie, people are weird and they don't want to be the first person to cut into something. So I usually cut a little wedge and get it started so that people feel free to go. And then with something hard, like the manchego or the gouda, I might slice half of it so that it's easy for people to grab and then leave the rest there with a the knife so that they can keep going on their own. That would be how I would do it. And then I always just leave the knife somewhere nearby. Sometimes I just leave it in the cheese so people know that's meant to be cut. So it's super easy. This one is creamier, so I'm gonna just leave that there. And then, uh, as Janelle said, it's helpful to cut a couple pieces ahead of time and just have that ready in case people are feeling intimidated. So like with this manchego, I just cut it, yeah. cut it in half, and then I'm gonna just stick that on the board so that it's there. And again, it just helps people know, oh, okay, they mean it. I can cut some pieces of the cheese. So it just helps people, but then just leave a knife out because sometimes people aren't gonna eat it. Yeah, So and this does not have to be fancy. This does not have to be like rivers of cheese here and this beautiful layer here. Like it can be if you want to, if you're doing something really special, but this is like a weeknight cheese part. Yeah, you're, you're, just, you're just, just helping people out. Helping people so that they don't feel like they're breaking some sort of rule by getting started. So next step is you need something to dip. So if you have um, bread on hand, that's lovely. Um, we always have crackers. And if you've ever watched our pantry video, you know we have a problem with crackers. When we were cleaning out the pantry, we found when we combined things that we had 18 open boxes of crackers. So, you know, a slight problem. But I think it's helpful to have a few different things. Um, so what I like to do is have a second little dish and then have some options for crackers. Instead of putting them on the board, I think you want to have a lot of things for people to dip into and you start running out of room. So I like having a separate thing where I can put any breads or crackers that we want um, and then that kind of stays separate and then we can just judge this up and make it pretty. So, um, so about gluten? I'm getting oh, one. I'm sorry. <laughs> so a prerequisite absolute necessity in this household are the Trader Joe's um, raisin rosemary crust. Absolutely delicious and just lovely. You can find the same kind of thing in other stores. Basically, I like having something that's a little bit sweet or has a little bit of, of flavor profile to it. And then I like having something a little more basic, like a pita cracker um, or anything that's sort of a little more of a butter cracker, something that's a little plainer. And then I always have a gluten-free option for our gluten-free friends. So these are gluten-free seeded cracker, also from Trader Joe's. Um, not sponsored, but we should be. Um, but you can also do rice crackers or um, like a vegetable cracker, just something so that uh, you never know who's coming and what they have. So I always have something a little sweet and seeded, something a little plainer, and something gluten-free. And bread if I have it, but I don't have it today. Okay, so once she's getting that out, I'm gonna just start filling in with a filler. And again, this is where you wanna splurge on some things and not on others. So I always start with the things that cost me the least amount of money and fill it out. So like prunes, dried prunes, just make a board look really great. So I just start Any on. sort of dried fruit, apricots, yeah. strawberries, anything you have, whatever on hand. you like. I love a dark, a dark dried cherry. I'm gonna do a mixture of at least two, so I'll do that. And then what I'm doing is just making eye candy, you know? It just makes things look better. And then we have some little dried cherries, so I'm gonna start just, again, dried cranberries, just things that people can pick at. And you'll find that when you have a party, there'll be some people who really gravitate towards the things that you're putting out, and half of the time, you're putting things away. So or That's eating fine. it yourself. That's fine. So, but it's really just to make it flesh out so it doesn't look so, you know, whatever. Then I splurge with, because I love Marcona almonds. 
So they are a little bit more pricey, but I think they're good. And again, people like them and picking them out, it's just a nice treat to have. So I just flush that out just like that. And then I'm gonna end with, I think I saw some blueberries. Oh no, these candy pecans. Oh my gosh, these are all the, oh, the bomb. best. These are from Trader Joe. <laughs> if you can, or you can make them, but these candy pecans, I'll just add these to it and, and you just get a little bit. And man, is that a great way to add the board. And, and then we have some blackberries. We do have some blackberries, I saw them. And then that's it. And if you don't have blackberries or some fruit, we have some apples. You can always slice a couple bits of apple. Just don't go overboard so that you don't end up with stuff you're not gonna use. But again, just a little color here. Normally I have raspberries. I don't, because I ate them all. <laughs> My secret obsession. So this board's looking a little dark, but that's okay. There you go. And then two things that we usually always have on hand that are just really good. Um, that are shelf stable and you keep in your pantry and you always have them on hand. If you need to shift this out a little bit, if you're gauging based on, um, you know, filler and volume and hunger, sometimes we have, you know, prosciutto or other kinds of, you know, meats in the fridge. Sometimes we don't, but these salamis are shelf stable until they're open because they're vacuum packed. So you can keep them in their pantry and you can always have one on hand. So if I wanted to dish this out a little bit, I would have a pull out of salami, do a little slice, do a little ribbon of that, and give a little bit more protein on the board. And the other thing I always keep on hand are these vacuum packed little individual things of olives from Trader Joe's, because it's just the right amount to have one little dish of olives um, that you can have, but then you don't waste them. So you, I know that this goes one cheese board full because sometimes you have all these jars of olives and then they go bad because they just sit in the back of your fridge. I don't know if that's you or not, but it is me. So this way we always have something on hand and I keep them in the pantry and they're ready to go. So then you just pull out your salami. We're gonna slice it quick and we're done. Yeah. And you can always add more. You can pull out, um, I love, especially if we're doing a brie, you can pull out some sort of like a pepper jelly or any kind of jam or marmalade or something to go with any of the soft cheeses. You can put a little of that on. If you have meats, you can put out a little mustard, do anything like that, any kind of condiment, a little dip. Um, cornichons are great, little pickles, any little jars. So what tends to happen here is we end up having like a little, you know, a little spread. These little salamis having them on hand really does make a difference. So again, we're just cutting enough to get people started. Put this little thing, perfect, that's it. Yeah, so that is honest to goodness 10 minutes in a real kitchen with real things that we had in our pantry. And all of a sudden someone shows up, you put on some music, you have this spread out and you look like a boss. This is not hard. Or you just have a really nice little girl there. <laughs> we do this a lot actually. We do. So you can see it's pretty, you got it done. You can do it. Now a big deal, go spread some cheese.